Hey class, welcome to the last mini lecture of the course. We're finally here, project three. It's due this weekend. So let's go through and talk a little bit about the science behind the roller coaster project and what you'll need to analyze in order to get from the start to the finish. I think you'll have fun with this one because the first part is you get to design your own track. The um, specifications for the track, there's a couple of initial conditions you need to meet and those are listed on the assignment. So let me know if you have any questions about that. You need at least two peaks and two valleys. Your launching point can be your first peak. I'm fine with that. Um, but if you don't wanna do it that way and you wanna build other peaks, that's fine too. Just make sure you clearly indicate which peaks and which valleys you're using for analysis. And then you'll find the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the momentum for each of those two peaks and each of those two valleys that you are analyzing. At the end of the peak and valley section, you'll have a flat section where your cart's going to collide with another cart that's identical to it. It's an inelastic collision. And once they collide, they're gonna continue on down the path until they hit phase three, which is a frictional section of the track that's going to cause them to come to a stop. Now, as we discussed with the phone drop, when the forces acting on our system change, then our equations that we use change as well. So that's why we've divided this into three phases because each one is where something is changing. Each one ends where something is changing in your system. And that final velocity in the phase before is the initial velocity for the phase after. So let's look at that in a diagram. So if you look at this image here, we've got the division line. So this is where phase one ends. This is where phase two ends. So phase one is you're going to launch and you're going to do kinetic energy and potential energy at all points along here and momentum at all peaks and all valleys. When you get to this point, you should have a velocity that you've just solved for because it's at one of my valleys. And then that velocity right here at the end becomes your initial velocity right here at the beginning for the collision. Then these two are gonna collide and continue as one to the frictional part. And again, the velocity you have at the end becomes the velocity you have at the beginning. So if we look at that um, in a little more detail, for phase one up here, this sets your, your total energy of your system. So whatever your energy is up here, the cart's at rest, it's all potential energy. Whatever that value is when you, when you plug in your numbers, that is your maximum energy, your total energy that you'll have along this whole ride, uh, a whole ride along the track here. So for instance, if this is my total energy here, then this much of it is gonna be kinetic energy and this much of it is gonna be potential energy from a visual standpoint. I hope, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, part is kinetic, part is potential, and you can solve for potential based on the height of each place that you are evaluating on the curve. And then when you get to the end here, you'll use conservation of energy all the way throughout and you'll have a velocity value right there at the end. In phase two, the initial velocity here is the final velocity from the end of phase one. You know that momentum is conserved across an inelastic collision. Kinetic energy is not conserved across an inelastic collision. In phase three, you will first find the work done by friction using the work energy theorem, and then you'll find the work, um, sorry, then you will find the force due to friction by using the work, okay? I'm gonna go over all these phases in a little more detail on the next few slides. So don't panic if it's not quite sinking in yet. That's just an overview of how we're going to approach this problem, how we're gonna break it down. And now let's dive into each individual phase and how that uh, analysis is gonna work. This phase one is the most intensive analysis of the whole project because you need the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the momentum for two peaks and two valleys. The way you're gonna do that is you're going to start by remembering that the total energy remains constant throughout. We don't have friction, we don't have air resistance. So at the launch, plate, launch point, when the cart is at rest, 
all of your energy is potential energy and you'll have some height H that you've designated and some mass of the cart M that you've designated. So it's really easy just to find the potential energy right here. That's your total energy for the entire run of the roller coaster and that number will not change, okay? Once you get past this launch point here, once you get past this launch point here and you start down into the valley, now all of a sudden you can calculate this potential energy. Your total energy hasn't changed, so the difference between those two is going to be your kinetic energy, okay? So the total energy will always be equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy at any point along the graph. You can use the height to solve for potential energy, and then you can subtract that from your total energy and you have kinetic energy. Let's look at what that looks like in action. So again, each peak and each valley, you'll solve for potential energy, kinetic energy, and momentum. So you'll start with the following understandings. You know that your total energy, which was your potential energy up here, doesn't change. That's how much energy you have to play with, regardless of where the, where the card is along the track. At any point along the track, total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. So you can solve for potential energy because you know the height, you know G, you know the mass. You can solve for that number, you can plug it right in. You can solve for the total energy because that's the energy it had at the launch point. The only thing in this equation you don't know is your velocity. Well, you can solve for it because there's one unknown and everything else you can plug in. Once you have solved for your velocity, then you can plug it into the momentum equation because V equals velocity times mass equals momentum. And you can use it, that velocity to find kinetic energy because one half MV squared is kinetic energy. And then you just use MGH to solve for potential energy. So you've got all these three things that you need to do at every peak and every valley. I will tell you the most common mistake people make is they think that the velocity at the bottom of a, of a peak is relative to the potential energy at the top of that peak. That is not the case. The velocity at the valley, whether it's this valley or that valley, is going to be solved for based on the total energy of the system, okay? If you have questions on that, just let me know because I can go over it with you in more detail individually. Um, but just make sure you're always referencing the total energy of the system when you're solving and carrying your energy through from start to finish. When you get down here to the end, you're going to have a final velocity, and that number is really important because you're going to use that when you take it into the collisions. When we have the collision, we have cart one coming in towards cart two on a level surface. Cart one has a velocity, cart two does not. After the collision, they're going to stick together and they're going to continue down the path with the same velocity. So if we look at that in scientific terms, we know that momentum is conserved across an inelastic collision. That means the total momentum before the collision is going to be the same as the total momentum after the collision. And if we break that down into the math, momentum before the collision is the momentum of this guy, which is the mass times its velocity, plus the momentum of this guy, which is this mass, times zero, because it's not moving. So honestly, before the collision, all the momentum is in this first cart right here, okay? After the collision, our mass becomes 2m, because they fuse together, and then they move with a new velocity, v final. The good news is, you know what v initial is, right? Right here. You know what the mass is, because you decided what it was at the beginning of the problem, or the project. And so your only unknown is this final velocity. So now you can solve for that final velocity. So you need to demonstrate that the momentum is the same before and after the collision. And then once you solve for your final velocity, you will show that the kinetic energy is not the same before and after the collision, because you'll just use your initial velocity and your final velocity to solve for total kinetic energy before and after the collision. So that's that part. This final velocity is an important number to have because this is the velocity that we're carrying into phase three, which is our friction, friction phase. So in this phase, we've got the two masses stuck together. You know their mass, you know their velocity because you solved for it at the end of phase two. So the initial velocity in phase three is um, 
the final velocity from phase two, which I know it's confusing, but once you get started, it'll all make sense that your velocities just carry over. And you have a distance of 20 meters. That's a friction frictional track. And at the end of it, you're told it's going to come to rest. So you know your final velocity is zero. It's really easy to overthink this section, but all you need to know is the work energy theorem. Any change in kinetic energy, which we have a velocity here, we don't have a velocity here, you can solve for the change in kinetic energy of this system, is a result of work done on the system. So in this case, the work being done is friction. So as soon as you figure out that change in kinetic energy, you've also figured out the work that was done by friction. So that part's pretty straightforward. And then, in order to figure out that change in kinetic energy, you need to remember that the initial velocity for phase three is the final velocity from phase two. So if you don't have that number, if, if you didn't calculate the velocity at that end valley, then you're gonna need to do that because you need to, you need to have that for this final um, analysis. And once you have the work done by friction, then you know the equation for work is force times distance and you have the distance so you can solve for the force, okay? Again, if you have questions on that, I didn't list all the equations here, but they, let's see, I think they're in the write-up that's posted on the course homepage, and those are equations you can look up, and those are questions you can send me by email if you have them. So just to quickly summarize and pull it all together, for phase one, your most important concept is that total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. If you remember that, and if you remember that total energy carries through the entire process, every hill and every valley has the same total energy um, accessible to it, and you use that to solve for kinetic energy, potential energy, and momentum, you'll be set. Phase two, you need to remember conservation of momentum. Momentum is conserved across the collision. The total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum after the collision. Plug in what you know, solve for what you don't, and that should give you your velocity after the collision between the two carts. For phase three, the key is the work energy theorem. If you know that change in kinetic energy, then you also know the work done on the system. If you know the work done on the system, you can solve for the force that did that work, which in this case is friction. And for every section throughout the whole thing, the final velocity at the end of each phase becomes the initial velocity for the next phase. So keep track of where you are on your track. Um, keep track of what, where those boundaries are when the conditions change and your equations change. And just remember that your velocity will carry through from one side of the boundary to the other. Um, as you're solving and setting up your new scenarios. So if you have any questions, you know I'm around to help, just an email away. So send me your stuff and I will help you out. So have fun with this and let me know what you need. All right, bye.